Welcome to The Issue Is, I'm Alex Michelson. Joining us this week, Andrew Yang on the presidential race, a new ballot proposition he's leading in California that would regulate big tech in a big way. Plus, John Cox, he ran for governor in 2018. Rumors are he'll run again in 2022. He's joining us to break some news here. Plus, Marcellus Wiley of Fox Sports, a Compton native, Ivy, Ivy League grad, former NFL All-Pro, with a surprising take on Black Lives Matters and athletes and activism. The issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, California's only statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson, and welcome to our newest affiliate this week, ABC Central Coast. Hello to everyone in Monterey, Salinas. It is great to have you with us. Our first guest this week is a familiar face around here. Andrew Yang went from complete unknown to viral sensation during an unlikely and unforgettable presidential campaign. He's now hosting the Yang Speaks podcast, running the Humanity Forward nonprofit, and he's helping to lead the effort to pass Proposition 24 here in California. It is focused on protecting your data that you post online. Andrew Yang, welcome back to The Issue Is. Great to see you. Great to see you too, Alex. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll talk about Proposition 24 in a second, but let's begin with the presidential race. This week you tweeted out, make no mistake, it's tough to defeat an incumbent. H how do you see the race right now? Joe and Kamala have a lead that's consistent throughout the country and is consistent even in the swing states. But as I said, it is tough to beat an incumbent. That's doubly true at a national level in a presidential race. And one of the big question marks, Alex, is how are our votes going to be counted and when will we know the results? Make sure that you know where to go or where to send the ballot in because we want to try and have a result as quickly as possible for the American people. Hopefully, on election night. Uh, let, let's talk for a moment about young people because that was really at the center of your whole race. You devoted, uh, they had this online army known as the Yang Gang. You spoke to them with a pretty authentic voice in social media. I'm not sure if Joe Biden himself has ever actually written a social media post. Clearly his staffers are putting up his posts. Joe's campaign has been making use of surrogates like me to reach young people where they are on Instagram and the other social media platforms. But the reality is that J Joe's appeal is broader uh, and beyond the internet. It's one reason why he's our nominee. So it, it sounds like your basic point is Joe doesn't necessarily need to be in that space. Well, I mean, Joe is Joe, you know, it's like trying to, to throw him on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, it wouldn't be authentic to him a and people would sense that. Voters can sense when something is natural for a candidate and when it's forced. All right, well, let's talk about something else that you are working on here in California. It's called Proposition 24. You say this could really be a model for the rest of the country when it comes to big tech and regulating that. Can you explain in, in, in basic terms what Proposition 24 actually does? Proposition 24 sees to it that your data and privacy rights are yours. And California has been the leader on this, Alex. They passed the CCPA in 2018, and this is trying to build upon that earlier law and elevate the protections for Californians so that you can opt out of geotargeting so they can't tell where you are, that if they negligently handle your data, you actually can bring some kind of suit against them. And there's a new data protection agency envisioned in this law that's actually going to be working just on people's data and privacy rights. So this is a major step forward. And you know that it's a good thing because a lot of the tech companies don't like it. <laughs> Put it in very simple terms. Not only the big tech companies, but folks on the left and the right, labor leader Dolores Huerta, she's against this, the ACLU against this, some more conservative editorial boards like the Orange County Register against this, saying that there are loopholes in it and that we don't really need another government bureaucracy. What do you say to those critics? Well, what I'd say to Californian voters is what's happening to your data right now? Uh, do you think that the tech companies and the data brokers are looking out for you? And Prop 24 is a way to activate people's data rights so that there's actually a watchdog working on your behalf where right now there is nobody. Another issue you are so passionate about supporting, of course, is the issue of universal basic income, what you call the freedom dividend. This was the center of your campaign, a thousand bucks a month for every American. Well, now local mayors across the country 
actually launching pilot programs to do it. Here in California, Stockton Mayor Michael Tubbs has been doing it for some time now. Just this week, we spoke to Long Beach Mayor Robert Garcia about his efforts. Take a look. Uh, having a guaranteed income, particularly for low-income folks and workers, uh, is going to be important in the future. I'm sure the Yang Gang is uh, now all following you. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's quite the uh, online army out there as <laughs> we well. We love the Yang Gang. The Yang Gang and I are thrilled that mayors like Mayor Garcia are leading the charge in implementing universal basic income trials in their communities. Over 20 mayors around the country have agreed that we need to have universal basic income to address the problems in their communities. So thank you, Mayor Garcia, for being a leader in this movement. And w you can see it's sweeping the country like wildfire, Alex. There was a poll that came out a couple weeks ago that said that 55% of all Americans believe that we should have a universal basic income in perpetuity. Uh, I, I, a member of the Yang Gang uh, just happens to be one of our guests this week, Marcellus Wiley of Fox Sports, former uh, NFL All-Pro. He, he campaigned with you. What did he mean uh, to, to your campaign to have the support of somebody like him? I told Marcellus, Alex, I'm a member of the Wiley gang. <laughs> Marcellus is such a class act and role model, you know, not just with his athletic endeavors, but his philanthropy, his activism. Uh, he and I both went to Columbia, and so we had that in common. He's a great family man. I was thrilled to have his support, and I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, we wanted to bring, bring you two together. Uh, Marcellus, why are you a Yang gang person? Oh, um, to say it in short, it's just I'm a humanitarian. Uh, I, I look at human beings uh, for not only their greatness, but uh, their concise expression of who they are and what they stand for. And Andrew Yang just did that for me, uh, made me overtly support him, which I've never done for a presidential candidate. Um, despite voting through many cycles and elections, I never had that much passion and respect for a human being, being a politician. So I believed in the person before even the policies and the policies certainly made me more excited uh, for supporting Andrew Yang. And I look forward to him trying to jump into this race still, but if not uh, 2024, <laughs> certainly I'm Yang Gang. Andrew, how's that feel when you hear that? It feels tremendous because I look up to Marcellus. I also literally look up to him because he's a very imposing figure. <laughs> <laughs> He is, he is I a, love it. It's he, so funny. Which one of us looks like we ran for president before? <laughs> this is a very good looking shot. And I, I feel like you two actually fit that presidential profile uh, maybe better than this guy right here. So, you know, <laughs> if someone was just tuning into this photo, they'd be like, I have a feeling those guys were the presidential candidates. Oh, no. Well, uh, Marcellus, uh, we're going to see you a little bit later on in the show. Uh, Andrew Yang, we love having you here. Republican John Cox is up next. But before we go, you know we love to play music on this show. And so we've got a music video created by a member of the Yang Gang called Voigent on YouTube. It shows videos of you on the campaign trail with your signature song. Let's bring it in. There it is. Yes. This is the chance to bring the song back. A little return of the Mac. The coolest campaign song any candidate had. Yeah, that's it. Here. Andrew Yang, thank you so much. That's it. Great to have you here. We'll see you in a bit, Marcel. Thank you, Alex. What do you see as the biggest difference between you and Gavin Newsom? Having an affordable life in California, Alex. That was Republican businessman John Cox on The Issue Is back in September 2018. At the time, he was running for governor against Gavin Newsom. Well, now, of course, Newsom won that election, but there's speculation that Cox will challenge Governor Newsom in 2022. So let's ask him about that. John Cox, welcome back to The Issue Is. Thank you, Alex. Great to be with you. All right. So are you running for governor again? There's rumors that you've formed an exploratory committee. Set, set, it, set the record straight. Well, I'm looking at it, Alex. And the reason is, is that this state right now is in crisis. Uh, we've got 15% unemployment. Small businesses are literally getting crushed. We can't send our kids to school. Uh, the response out of Sacramento has been inconsistent. The things I talked about uh, during the campaign, 
the incredible housing costs that we're incurring in this state, the, the, the homelessness crisis, these things have gotten worse, not better. And then now we're having fires that have fouled the air and threatened people all over the place. You know, I, I knew that Gavin Newsom, you know, nice looking guy like you, Alex, uh, you know, uh, but he's a career politician. I, I've been in the private sector. I built a successful business over 40 years. I want to offer my ideas to try to get us out of this and, and get some changes to the state. Well, you're definitely a, a handsome man, uh, John Cox. Uh, <laughs> so let's be very clear, <laughs> though. So, so that's your have you formed an exploratory committee to run for governor? People have asked me to consider, you know, taking another run. Uh, I got almost five million votes. Uh, I wasn't a celebrity or a career politician. Uh, I think that's a base to build on this time. And there's a lot of people that need to know what my ideas are for fixing the problems of this state. So an exploratory committee means that you get a chance to look at the issue, potentially raise some money, talk to people on this issue. Sort of, what would what would make you not decide to run? Well, if I felt that things were going to correct on their own, I think that's not going to happen. You know, I've talked over with my family. Uh, we've decided that this is something that needs to get done in this state. We care about what goes on here. I love California. I love living here. It's the best state in the country, as far as I'm concerned. And. Uh, I think, you know, what would make me not do it would be just uh, other personal factors uh, that, that aren't apparent now. But you're a Republican. Uh, this is a very Democratic state. I mean, right now, 46 percent registered Democrat, 24 percent registered Republican. Uh, Hillary Clinton won this state by four million votes. Gavin Newsom beat you 62 to 38. So where do you come up with those votes as a Republican? How do you actually pull well, this off? Let me let me correct you. There's 24, 25% of the people in the state who are, who are registered to neither party. Right. And the reason that they're not registered to either party is because they don't trust the parties. They, they think they're corrupt. They think they're ruled by lobbyists and things. And they're probably right. There's a lot of things that are going on here that I think people want to see fixed. And that's the thing. They want to see better management. And I've had 40 years of experience doing that and building a successful business. And I, I think I can apply those tools to, to making California better for a lot of people. Of course, the, the biggest issue right now here in California and across the country is coronavirus and its extraordinary impact in every aspect of life here in California. If John Cox is governor right now, what does California's response to that actually look like? What's different than what we're seeing? We should have been doing a lot of testing a lot earlier on so that we'd have a lot more confidence. Uh, uh, this idea of just smothering the economy and keeping everybody sheltered uh, has resulted in a lot more suicides, a lot more mental illness, a lot more damage to people's lives from destroying their small businesses. And, and that's a and that's. A, a damage, Alex, that's going to be with us for a many, many years to come. Um, we're also in the middle of a presidential campaign right now. Do you support President Trump's right. reelection? Do you think he should he should win over Joe Biden? Yes, I do, because the economy is a, a, a huge issue. Uh, uh, the Sanders AOC wing of the party is definitely in control. They want more government. And, you know, we've seen what more government and, and more regulations does in California. Almost every Democratic leader of this state blames the president for his response to coronavirus. They say he didn't wear a mask publicly for months, uh, that his testing and tracing policy wasn't very good, uh, that he didn't take this seriously. Do you think there's any truth to that? Listen, the federal government can do what it can do, but really and truly the state and local authorities are much closer to the people and really should be the ones directing a lot of the effort here. All right, uh, John Cox, as we wrap things up, now that we're doing the governor's campaign again, and we appreciate you breaking news here on The Issue Is, <laughs> dear for the Explorer Committee, what's, what's the bumper sticker? What's the bottom line of why somebody should consider voting for you for governor? Uh, an affordable and quality life in California. That's what we want. And we're not getting that right now. All right. Good luck on the campaign trail. You're starting pretty early, right? <laughs> this campaign is well, uh, two years away. It's in crisis. Yeah. It's in crisis. And, and this is a big state and it's a big job to do. So we're going to try to, you know, get out and talk to people real early here and get this, get this job done. Thank, Thank you, John. Nice to see you.
Thanks. More still to come, but a reminder that you can log on to our website, theissueisshow.com, where you can get past episodes and special podcasts. And send us your comments via email, theissueis at foxtv.com. I don't know how many people really look into the mission statement of Black Lives Matter, but I did. And when you look at That is Marcellus Wiley on his show, Speak for Yourself, on Fox Sports 1. Marcellus was an all-pro with the San Diego Chargers. He's a Compton native, a Columbia grad, and now he says his mission in life is being a husband and a father. What a great picture there. Marcellus Wiley, welcome to The Issue Is for the first time. Oh, thank you so much, and congratulations on this platform and the move, man. I'm a big fan of this. I love what you're talking about. Oh, thank you so much, and, and likewise. Um, l- let's begin with this issue of athletes and activism. We're seeing entire leagues getting political in unprecedented ways. What do you make of this moment? And do you think that the activism right now is actually effective at persuading people? Um, I'm excited for just the social conscience to want to adjust to whatever our culture has presented itself in terms of some of the discrimination, racism, some of the issues that still plague our society, even at a lesser degree than before, but still in existence. So you have to have a healthy amount of respect for that. In terms of its effectiveness and in terms of how focused these efforts are in materializing thoughts and words into actions, uh, that's when I get a little discouraged. Um, I know that there are people out there who have said, shut up and dribble, and I'm not one of those people. And I just want them to talk about their issues and pass the ball. Not shut up and dribble, talk and pass the ball to PhDs, social scientists, people who are truly invested. Well, it's interesting. The coach of your favorite team, the L.A. Clippers, Doc Rivers, had Congresswoman Karen Bass uh, talk with the Clippers to try to educate them on these issues, educate them on matters of legislation. That happened this week, to your point. Um, You've gotten a lot of attention for your comments about Black Lives Matter. What do you make of the movement overall? It's not something I support in, in, in terms of the organization. Um, and, but then people want to take the conversation beyond the organization to the actual movement. And then when I, I say, what is the movement that started, what, 2013? Remember, I'm born in 1974. So my black life has mattered since the day I was born. Uh, so it's kind of hard to support an organization or a movement that one is so young in its existence, two, so polarizing in that same existence. One of the main things that Black Lives Matter is is arguing for is defunding of the police. As somebody who grew up in Compton, does does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, I know it's it's detailed. It's, you know, trying to take some of the the funding and put it into more social services. Uh, But uh, my police interactions have been overwhelmingly positive, as they are by the numbers for everyone in this country, despite obviously some some negative occurrences and unfortunate situations that have occurred. Uh, But it's amazing that the NBA players who were wearing Black Lives Matter T-shirts, 90 percent of them, but only 20 percent, according to reports, were registered to vote. Today's world is about attention, attention based society, and everyone wants likes and followers. And I'm looking for love and leaders. <laughs> so, yet amazingly, you still have a lot of followers, Marcella. So, <laughs> it seems to be working out I know, for you. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> On the social media front, you got a nice game there. And big part of big part of your social media game uh, is your family. And I know you've talked so passionately about the importance of uh, fatherhood, about the importance of black fatherhood specifically. What do they say? Over seventy percent of our homes are single parent homes. And I think the erosion of a nuclear family is in part supporting and contributing to the ills of our community. I'm from Compton. Let me give you this short story that my grandmother, who was uh, in Watts, California, and she moved from Watts, California to Compton, California. And my mother graduates from Compton High School, straight A student, but she had two kids by the age of 19, me being the youngest. And she moves from Compton, California to South Central Los Angeles, this little itty bitty apartment. And my parents were there to just support me, encourage me, 
and navigate me through all the ills that we had seen in our own family, let alone in our community. Uh, I'm a guy who's been shot at six times on the minimum in terms of running for my life because bullets rang out in my vicinity growing up. I'm a guy that had shotguns to my head twice by police officers, one in mistaken identity and one time playing with a BB gun that looked real. And in both of those situations, apologies were given by those same police officers and obviously no harm inflicted on me. Uh, I'm just the guy who's been through it. And now I'm in a world where I'm looking at people who haven't been through it and therefore it kind of shows in their rhetoric. The Migos had a song, Walk It Like You Talk It. <laughs> and I say, I think they got that song wrong, even though I love that song. It should be <laughs> Talk It Like You Walk It. Wow. And I hope the world takes notice. And interesting that even after that experience, you're still not for defunding the police, at least not the way that it's been explained by Black Lives Matter um, after that experience. Um, mm -hmm. All right, we want to sneak in a quick break. We also like to play music on the show. And this week we are celebrating the birthday of America's Queen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Beyonce. Marcellus, this is where you get to show off your moves. <laughs> I'll be back. What's up, more, hey? more of yeah, Marcellus hey. after this. Yeah, <laughs> All right. So we got a lot of sports coming up. Football baseball, basketball, all going at the same time. It's going to be the craziest few months we've ever seen in sports. So we want to get some predictions from you. Maybe help us make some money uh, in Las Vegas. All right. So who is going to win uh, the Super Bowl? The Ravens versus the Buccaneers. Who wins that game? The Baltimore Ravens. So there it is. I said it. Go to uh, Vegas and lose all your money. A, Bet ring, the a ring for the MVP. Uh, Lamar Jackson in that scenario. Who is going to win the World Series. The LA Dodgers, finally. <laughs> Let's just be real about this, hopefully. And finally, I think I know where you're going with this. Who's going to win the NBA Finals? Clip City, Chip City, Los <laughs> Angeles Clippers. I think it's going to be the Dodgers and either the Lakers or the Clippers. But in either event, LA okay. wins. So we end with Randy Newman. And I love L.A. this week. Marcellus, thank you. Thank you for watching uh, The Issue As Everybody at Home. We love it.